Life will become difficult towards the end. Challenges will come. Disasters will come. Catastrophes will come. And when the earth is covered with injustice as it is going towards that direction, the Prophet ﷺ gives us the glad tidings of a righteous ruler who will come. He will fill the earth up with justice and peace as it was filled with oppression and wrong. He is famous amidst us as the Mahdi who will be from the lineage of the Prophet wasallam, from the children of Fatima. So the age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. At the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the opposition is so huge. 80 banners under each flag, 12,000 men. When the two sides meet, and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. So then the campaign starts. The battle is hot and it's intense. A third of the Muslims will die. And a third will be victorious. Or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon. As they have just become victorious, a voice will come out to them that, O oh Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. So the Imam Al Mahdi will send 10 riders to go and investigate and scout, see if the news is correct. And the Rasul says, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. I know their names. And I know the names of their fathers. And I know the color of their horses. They will be the best riders of the day. So they will go and see. Ah, the calamity has come. The Dajjal has come. There is a man at the time of Prophet Muhammad his name was Safi, son of Sayyid. And he hated the Prophet Sallallahu immensely. He was growing to hate him a lot. He was able to tell you what you're thinking. He had these certain abilities. Because people were talking about him being the Dajjal himself. And Rasul Sallallahu heard about him. He wanted to go one day to find out whether he was really the Dajjal or not. He goes, Umar ibn al-Khattab was with him. And they were going towards the village where Safi ibn Sayyid was. And he was sitting down. Umar al-Khattab describes it, says he's coming from tree to tree. Rasul is hiding behind the trees, trying to come closer to this boy to try and hear what he's saying. As Rasul approached Safi, he got very close and started to hear what he's saying. Suddenly the boy's mother saw the Prophet and she said, Ya Safi, Muhammad's there. And Safi looked up and stopped talking. He started getting angry. Rasul said, if only his mother didn't see me, I could have listened for a few more words and I would have known whether he is the Dajjal or not. Rasul Sallallahu said to the boy, I hid something inside of my, my chest that I want you to try and figure out what it is. And the boy looked, frowned a bit and he said, ad dukh Rasul Sallallahu said, may your power never rise beyond that. Rasul Sallallahu said to him, Do you believe that I am the messenger of God? He said, Only if you believe that I am the messenger of God. Prophet Sallallahu got up and left. Umar al-Khattab asked him, What was that, ad dukh What did you hide inside of you? What was that, that word that you kept hidden? He said, I hid the word ad dukhan And he guessed half of it. This boy, Sallam Sayyid, grew up. And he lived in Medina. He actually embraced Islam. And he got married. And they say that he had something like ten children. And the companions used to avoid him. They couldn't trust being around him. One day, a companion of the Prophet ﷺ was sitting next to a shade under a tree, resting. And then Safi ibn Sayyid got his luggage up and sat next to this companion. 
The companion looked at him and he sort of didn't want him to be next to him and he said to him, look, there's lots of shade around, you can go and sit somewhere else. So he started to cry. Safi Ibn Sayyad cried. He said to him, why are, you, why are you crying? He said, about what everyone's saying about me, that I'm the Dajjal. And he looked at him and said, you should know of all people, you should know that a Dajjal is not a Muslim and I'm a Muslim. He cannot get married and I'm married. He cannot have children and I have children. And he cannot enter Mecca or Medina and here I am. The companion said, Wallah, he's right. You have a point. Then Safi ibn Sayyid said to him, But you know what? That name is quite nice. I wouldn't mind if I was actually him. And the companion got up and said, Please stay away from me. And he walked away from him. And while Safi ibn Sayyid was laughing, so this man was a very strange mad person. Yeah. After the Prophet's death, there was the, the great war that happened with Musaylam al kadhab Safi ibn Sayyad was fighting with them and they looked for his body and they say we could never find him neither among the dead or the living. He vanished. This is the story of Tamim al Dari. Tamim al Dari came to the Rasul and narrated a story. Ya Rasul Allah, I was in a ship and the ocean started to become rough and there's 30 other people with me. And the waves, you know, bashed us from pillar to post for a whole month. And after a month, the waves subsided and we reached near an island. We saw a creature, the strangest we have seen, covered in hair to the extent that we couldn't tell its front from its behind. So they said, Whoa, we unto you, what are you? So he said, I am Jasasa. So they are hesitant and they say, We thought he's like a devil. Jasasa said, There's a person in that monastery who is longing to see you. Go to him. And suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man who was the biggest in build that we have yet to have seen. His arms were wrapped to his neck with chains and his head and arms were also chained together to his knees, to his legs. We said, what are you? And he said, you are able to hurt me because I'm chained up. So it's my right to ask who are you first so I can ensure my safety. They said very well. We are people from the Arabs. We set sail in our ship and a storm hit us until we became lost and landed on this island. And it led us to you. They said we got afraid of this man and we, we didn't feel safe around him. However, the man said to us, tell me about the palm trees of Baysan. They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. He said, now explain to me about Buhayra Tabariya. They said, yes, there is lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. Then he asked them, he said, tell me about Zagar fountain. They said, yes, it's got a lot of water and its people plant a lot. Tell me about a prophet who is illiterate, cannot read or write. What has he done? They said he has come out in Mecca and now he lives in Yathrib in Medina. He asked them, have his people fought him? They said, yes. He said, what did he do? They said, he was driven out by his own people. Really? Has that really happened? They said, yes. He said, behold, it is better for those people who obey him to keep on obeying him. I am Christ. Now very soon, I'm going to be given permission to leave and I'm going to come out. I will walk throughout the land. He said, there, isn't, there wouldn't be a village or a city or a place on earth except that I would have reached it all in 40 days. All except two places, Mecca 
and Tiba, Medina. So the Rasul at this time narrating the story hit his member like this. He goes, Tayyiba, Tayyiba, this is Tayyiba, Medina is Tayyiba. The Prophet says, the Jal has one of his eyes obliterated. The second eye is damaged. His hair will be curly. His legs will be arced. He walks a little different. He's stubby, strongly built. On his forehead is written kafir. And the Prophet ﷺ separated it. Kafara. Every believer can read it, whether he's literate or illiterate. His start or where he comes out from again will be from the area of Khorasan. The people that will come with him, 70,000 of the Jews of Isfahan. The Prophet says they will have flat faces like the shield and their cheekbones will be raised and their faces will be meaty. He will roam the earth and the hadith says not a village will be missed except he has gone to it. There is no calamity on the face of this earth. From the time of Adam till Qiyamah come, greater than the calamity of the Dajjal. And there wasn't a prophet. He came and warned his people about him. And I am the last of the prophets. And you are the last of the nations. So he will come from you. There's no way about it. And subhanallah, before he comes, Three years will happen like this. And the first year, Allah Rabbul Izza will order the sky to hold back a third of its rain. And the second year, two thirds will be held back. And the third year, there will be no rain. So a drought and famine has already gripped mankind. And then this man comes, the Dajjal. With him, a river of fire and a river of water. And he enters into a village amidst the people. And he says, do you believe in me? I am your Lord. And when they believe, he tells the sky rain and rain comes. Tells the earth, produce your produce. And it will produce its produce. He will go to a dead person, tell a person, a bad one. If I bring your parents back to life, would you believe that I am your Lord? He will say yes, he says rise and two shayateen will come in the image of his parents and will say son listen to him, he's your Lord. He will tell the earth, spit out your treasures. The hadith says like bees, gold and silver and diamonds will come out of the ground and follow him. Iman will be shaken to its core and he will go to another group of people, believe they will say no. So he says, sky hold your water, earth hold your produce, and famine and drought and calamity will befall him. He will stay and roam the earth for 40 days. The first day will be the length of a year. The second day like a month, the third day like a week, and the fourth day will be like ordinary days. He will traverse every city and every village except for two places, Mecca and Medina. Allah Rabbul Azza has protected those with angels. He will come towards Medina behind Uhud and he will climb the hilltop with his people and he will say, do you see that white palace? That white palace of Ahmed. And he gets down to come towards it and the angel shoes him away. And he turns his face towards Bilad al-Sham. And understand, this is the time of the Mahdi. The Imam is here. And the Dajjal has come. And the Muslims are under the leadership of Imam al-Mahdi. They don't have the capacity to overcome this challenge. They are locked up and surrounded the Dajjal and his armies outside. And as the Muslims are in the siege, 
men will tie their wives and their mothers and sisters out of fear that they will run to the Dajjal and fall victim to it. Even in Medina al munawwarah when he is camped outside Medina, three earthquakes will hit the city. Everyone will think, oh my God, and run out of the city. So the Prophet said, Allah will purify the city of its hypocrites. And only the true believers will remain. So now the Dajjal after that comes to Baytul Maqdis. And the Imam is there. And the Muslims are there. And they're trying to put up a resistance. When they are inside this encampment. So eventually they come to this consensus. Listen, we can't sit here forever. Let's get out and meet them face to face. Fajr comes. And the Adhan is given. And the lines stand up. And Iqama is given. And then Subhan al Khaliq. The area goes dark. So that a man cannot see his hand. And then when light comes back, they see in Isa is amidst them. Isa, the son of Mary, will descend. His hand will be on the wings of two angels. Next to the white minaret at the eastern side of Damascus. And the Prophet says, what will be your situation when Isa, the son of Mary, comes amidst you and your Imam is amidst you? The Iqama is given and he notices that Isa alayhi salam comes. So he says, come, lead us in salah. Isa alayhi salam will put his hand between the shoulders of the Mahdi and say, the Iqama was given for you, so lead the salah. And then when the salah is finished and the people are ready, open the doors and from afar, the Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam. The false Messiah sees the real Messiah. The Hadith says he starts to melt like salt and water. And he runs and Isa alayhi salam chases him. So he catches him in the Bab al Lud. And one narration with a lance and another one with a sword. Isa alayhi salam will strike and show the blood of the Dajjal in his sword. And the Hadith says, had he were not to strike, the man would have melted to death. The Muslims have gone through a colossal test as this calamity of the Dajjal has just finished. Allah Rabbul Izzah will inspire Isa alayhi salam that, O oh Isa, another of my creatures is about to come out. And no power on the face of this earth will withstand them and outstand them.